hardcore people. <laughs> hardcore thrift dwellers. Only two of you. De uh, DePetrio, remember him? Oh, or DePetrio? What was Scotty his name? DePierre. Scotty, DePierre. yeah, Scotty DePiero. Scotty DePiero. Shout out to him, man. Man, hopefully you're uh, practicing the social distancing, which is our next topic. Wow, that's a good segue right. there, Lester. Perfect. First, it's first the topic, worst, man. You had nothing lined up, Lester. I had nothing, man. I'm asking Nathaniel, hey, man, what we should do? I don't know. Well, okay, we plan each of us have, like, one topic for this first episode. Before we figure out, like, how we integrate, like, the whole show format, and I was yeah. like, all right, my topic, I was just going to talk with you guys about how you found this uh, social isolation. How have you, like, mentally been handling it? What have you been doing? You know, just in general, how have you been in the past? I guess it's really been two weeks of hardcore social isolation for our city anyways. I know a lot of places have been way before that. But I know we've all kind of been away, right? Like in our own bunkers. Yeah. <laughs> how about you, Lester? What have you been doing? How has your life changed since this social <clears throat> isolation distancing stuff? I've been working from home. I think I think the toughest thing is obviously being around someone else who's working from home too right so now mm -hmm. instead of having that break away from her mm -hmm. i'm with her from we wake up the same time in the morning turn on our computers mm -hmm. check our emails and all that stuff and then it's all like i, I turn around back here he's like oh what are you doing it's like oh <laughs> shut up i'm in a meeting don't talk don't put your music on I'm like whoa man i didn't know how serious this was yeah, but... Hey, Ian, you know what my favorite Hulk Hogan movie is? What? Trouble in Paradise. <laughs> it's fine. Hey, man. Hey, man. It's funny, though. It's, that's, like, it's valid because uh, if you look on, like, Twitter and, and, and whatever social media, like, a lot of people are saying, oh, I can't stand it, or, you know, this is only, like, five minutes in, and... I think our, I don't know if our relationship will last. Like wow. all these people, like, wow. a lot of people are saying it. Like, like a lot of it is sarcastic, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm is sure there's going to be some people who never spend time together, spending a lot of time together. And I don't know. It's, it okay, could be either good or bad. So here's the question though. Mm -hmm. Is that, is maybe this is not as much causing the break as it is unveiling what really was the problem in the beginning? Like, it's been underneath them the whole time. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't meant to be. Fifth all they say, you know? Sometimes you don't have to accept it. That's just things I'm really like, I mean, You know I don't have that issue with, with Annalie. Like, yeah. that's not an issue for us at all. So It's like... I don't know. It's funny seeing, seeing other people like, oh, ho, ho. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> for people who don't know, Ian and myself, we've been like... The people we married is like our childhood... Uh, our loves are, yes, you know, high school sweethearts. They kind of know every fault in our life already. Yeah, man, so they're used to you, right? Yeah, like, I'm not even going to say the, how intimate you can get, but, like, <laughs> it's not a surprise anymore. You yeah, know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. They were with us when we were stupid kids, and then they're still with us when we were adults. There's nothing left, you exactly. know? Exactly. My bared soul to you. <laughs> it's like you have to make every day new. But you know it's not going to be because you're just going <laughs> to fart in front of her anyway. Let's do farting in bed, see? <laughs> Once you get the fart in bed close, it's, you guys are together forever. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't like it, then like maybe you're not meant to marry that person, you know? No. <laughs> There's no other advice. <laughs> I'm uh, not a health professional. <laughs> How about you, Ian? How have you been finding social isolation with your family? It's good. It's what I realized is really hard is like teachers have a ridiculously hard job. <laughs> you try to like tutor your kids, like, man, I already have a job, <laughs> you know. And I, I, don't know, I never thought I'd have to teach like teaching your own kids. You mean right? And all that stuff. Like, obviously, you work on that stuff with your kids a little bit, but trying to enforce it and like have a schedule of like a school. Like a school day, you know, mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, takes some getting used to, but it's, it's only been, what, like the first week, so. Well, that is, <laughs> it's like learning a new skill, right? Like trying to skateboard, you just suck and you keep falling off of it at the beginning. 
Sad thing, I've never learned how to skateboard, though, so that's might not be a good analogy, but I feel like it'll get better. I enjoy it, actually. Because Ian and I have... Sorry? No, yeah. oh, keep, keep going. <laughs> no, I think Ian and I have kids, and since they're home now, they don't go to school, so, like, I guess your school's... Your kid's school gave you, like, an outline and stuff to do at home? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my kids... Just... Yeah, like, you try to do it, and I'm trying to learn this app that they have. It's called Seesaw. Yeah. And I'm, like, you know, and I'm just... I'm setting half done uh, <laughs> up to the teacher. <laughs> you know, like, draw all the shapes in the picture, and at it's just, least, like, one circle. At least it's something, like, man. Right? No, we figured it out as we went, but it's fun, though. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. So overall, though, Lester, would you say it's positive or negative, or just, mm, it, it's a new uh, Honestly, it's been positive. I, I've worked from home before in other jobs, but, like, it's been positive, but at the same time, right, the thing I miss the most is actually, like, interacting with people or, like, going out. Mm-hmm. Right? Because, like, something like this, I'd rather be in a room or around a table and talk. Right? Instead of, like, of doing course. it over, you know, a webcam or whatever. But that's what the situation is, right? So, it is what it is, but I, I, I'm dealing fine with it. I'm kind of freaked out. I actually, last week, obviously, I had to go to work, Right? So I've been at home for about four or five days now, right? So right now I'm freaked out about like actually going to the store and getting like yeah. toilet paper or something, right? You never know, man. Some dude with like someone's family or whatever probably came back from some trip and didn't say nothing, right? Mm-hmm. They go touch like an apple at the store. It's like I want that apple, but wash your hands in your apples. Oh, bro. I do all the time, man. Yeah. It's like that yeah. Okay? yeah. Come home with that COVID on their lips. Yeah, right. Yeah. Got the COVID on their lips. Yeah. <laughs> if your kids don't know that joke, watch Delirious. It's not COVID he's talking about. No. <laughs> How about you? You net positive, negative, or ne- yeah? Um, at home, home, positive. Just like, like the whole grocery shopping thing is yeah. Like I was saying to Lester, it's eerie. You know, it's it's a weird feeling. Um, last time I went to Superstore, which is only a couple days ago, I was kind of, uh, you know, you feel kind of like anxious and, and paranoid now, right? When you're when you're out in public in like a, a supermarket, and I just uh, I ran into my barber, which is we know Mark. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. From school, uh, and he was funny enough. His girlfriend was in front of me in line, and he went to go get something, and. When he came back, I'm like, yeah, it's his girlfriend. And so we start talking, and it kind of, like, it eases you a little bit, you know? Like, you're not going to really be able to see a lot of your friends and, and even family in, in a lot of cases. And just to be able to, like, kind of run into someone in the midst of this that you know, it was kind of comforting. But, yeah, like, other than that, like, the the social distancing and, and all that, like, you have uh, your brother Nate. Your brother-in-law's party was supposed to be this weekend coming up, and had to cancel. Yeah. My my nephews, uh, Annalie's uh, sister's uh, boys, were ha- are having a combined birthday the same the same day, and they still want to do something. But a lot of the family is not going because they just they want to be safe, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. So, you see, to me, it's of... funny to hear you guys like cause I work in healthcare. Right, so I'm surrounded yeah. by disease and germs all the time. <laughs> so yeah, they, I always like the way you guys are looking now at things like, oh, that there's germs on that. You know, that's a, a vector there for bacteria. And I see that every day. That's how my mind is like all the time now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's funny mm-hmm. to feel, hear other people think like that now. Yeah. But the the good yeah. thing is too, though, obviously because you are in that field, right? Right? How I said yeah. it online or whatever. Or to other people, like, we live in a really small city that we actually know some people in healthcare. So it doesn't really freak us out. It's just more of the what-ifs, right? Like, what if this happens, right? So. Well, I have I have a coworker who admitted, like, admittedly, and there's a lot of people, like, you can see it on social media, who admittedly, they're not phased by this. They're not taking it as seriously as a lot of people not not as seriously as they should. Like even if we are overreacting, mm-hmm. what's the worst that can come of it? You know. But if you don't react accordingly, like 
okay. you don't know what can happen, right? So that's like I have a code that admittedly says like, yeah, I don't I don't care about the whole like oh wash your hands after everything or touch your face, da 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 like or you know, I'll stand next to you. I'm like, dude, some people are really uncomfortable yeah. with people within six feet of them these days, right? You yeah. gotta respect yeah. that. You know? Well, okay. Even if you don't believe in in yourself personally, like if you don't think you're gonna be affected, but at least people know people's feelings, right? Yeah. Yeah. All you gotta do is look at how Italy is right now, and this is me, like as the health person, like talking. It's gut wrenching for me as a, as a health person. I don't want to see my profession, but you guys can guess. Mm-hmm. It's gut wrenching for me to see the state of their health care there in Italy, where they they're just they're at max capacity plus. Um, really, they they pretty much said that if you are a senior and you are sick with COVID nineteen, they just can't treat you. You know, they can't help you. <clears throat> All they're going to do is hopefully let you die in dignity because they they just can't. They, they can't anymore. They're more going to help the younger people, the nurses there working 12-hour shifts, 24-hour shifts because there's such a shortage of, of nurses there now. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't, you know, that is the reality of what could happen here. Like, imagine that. New York is feeling it right now. Yeah. New York is at max capacity. Their, the nurses are running out of supplies. Like, they can't, they don't even have gloves and masks. To, yeah. to protect themselves, to help people, you know, and I don't know what you guys, I, I love patients, but I'm not going to go help someone without a glove and a mask and put yeah. myself at risk, you know, and so mm-hmm. what, every last patient that you have that comes in that you have to treat, so you have to think of it, that's more medicine, that's more supply that can actually be saved for people who need it, Yeah. and mm-hmm. it, it's less stressful on the system, and here's also this, I am very paranoid about bringing in COVID-19 to where I work, because I work with seniors, I work in a nursing home, and one first me bringing that into my nursing home, I can literally wipe out an entire floor of seniors. Yeah, that, yeah. that's a legitimate reality for me, and it scares the crap out of me. So I, I try to stay healthy mm-hmm. and not bring that into my workplace. Yeah, man. Because I would feel horrible. I probably hurt. I'm not gonna say I would kill myself. I would probably hurt myself if I was the one who killed 30 or 48 seniors on one floor. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That and people are so. It feels like they're selfish. Am I wrong to say that people? Oh no, no, no. That's fair. That's a fair statement. Because you all see it all the time, right? Break, yeah. These kids at spring break piss me off. Right? Yeah. Such an idiot. Sorry to say it. I, or, I didn't uh, mean to say. Was it, it Kentucky where they exactly. had like a COVID nineteen party? They invited like forty people, and then one of them ended up getting it or something. Obviously, all those other people at this party are gonna get it too now. So, <laughs> it's so screwed up, man. It's like really. <laughs> Like it's they must have a lot. Of, they must have a lot of money in the states to like you know if they really do need to go to the hospital or whatever, pay that yeah. six hundred dollar fee to get tested, right? Like, come on. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't want to keep talking about no. it. Like, we really should probably talk yeah. about it. But I will say the one. <laughs> it makes you realize that you know the social isolation, how much your world can change really quickly, and what is really important to you in life. I actually love staying home with my kids. I think it's it's given a chance for us to kind of grow together. Yeah. In a different way, like my wife too. Like we have to rely on each other to keep each other sane. Yeah, exactly. If anything, and really, what I miss, honestly, what I miss is you guys. I miss you, Ian and Lester. <laughs> I miss that. Uh, I honestly do. Like, no, I know, I know. I and it feels it. like I took it for granted before, like when we could hang out, but we didn't. And mm-hmm. now, like, we want to hang out, but we can't. No. Yeah. So fucking stay safe, everybody. At least we have all this, right? Physical media, yeah. <laughs> You even got the white wall, bro. Is that your bunker for real? <laughs> Are you bunker yet? Skeet, skeet, skeet all over the walls. <laughs> People know what that means now. Okay, let's move on to a happy topic, though. <laughs> I can't 